Um, we are proud to uh, host this kind of meetup, so thank you all for coming. I'm going to introduce uh, what's through it and what we do here, but just five slides, really, just five. Uh, so it is a search engine for classifieds, and that's it. And mainly focused <laughs> only. Uh, we are focused only, or mainly in uh, real estate, used cars, and jobs. But also we have some uh, other co some countries that we have products and also rentals for vacations. But uh, we are in 44 countries right now. And we try to dominate the, the wall and conquer everything. So it's not right now, but we have a lot of work to do. Uh, but the important part is the numbers of that we host here, 44 countries, a lot of millions of ads. We have a lot of clients that they are the sources that we receive the, the, the advertisements. We have a lot of them. And also the visits per month, the push notifications, uh, we have a very good numbers. But the important part here are the Trovitors, the people that work here at Trovit. So we have 100 million right now. Uh, but the important part for this meetup is uh, <coughs> the technology that we host. We use a lot of uh, open source technology. This is only some icons of technology that, that we use right now here. Uh, but the important part are the departments at Trovit that uh, use that kind of technology. We have uh, front-end de departments focusing PHP, other and back-end parts that are mainly focused in Java, but we also use other technologies. And we also have departments from applications, web mobile. So uh, we use a lot of different technologies. Why and why we? explain that, that because we always have open positions here. We are like always trying to hire people, and sometimes it's hard, but here I know that we have a lot of hackers and a lot of developers, so I put the list of the open positions that we have right now at Trovit, so if anybody is interested, just ask after the presentation, of course. <laughs> so thank you very much, and welcome. Second, small introduction that is also boring, but it would be a bit even faster. Uh, I am uh, Alish. I'm the president of Kitty Spain, which is the organization that organizes this thing. Uh, we're looking for people to make presentations. We're looking for people who make free software and want to talk about their, their project and are excited about it. So if, if you know about anyone or yourself are uh, free software hackers and interested in talking about, uh, about your story, then feel free to come to help me or the rest of the kitty people around and, and tell them that that you should be part. And now, uh, and Martin, Daniel, get set up. Big applause. Okay, so my name is Daniel. Uh, if you don't notice, I'm the tour guy. The onion is in tour. Well, I think it says tour in the back, but I'm not sure. Uh, yes, yes. Anyway, um, this is my email address if, if you would like to nag me. I should probably stand. Where should I stand? Should I stand? Yeah, yeah. You are very fine. Wherever you uh, <laughs> How many people know what Tor is? Would you raise hands? Okay, that's good. How many people actually use Tor daily? Daily? Not yeah. Daily, <laughs> okay, one person. That's actually more than I expected. Okay, so uh, what is Tor? Just gonna explain it quickly, if anyone, just in case anyone doesn't know, Tor is an anonymizing piece of software. What this means is that it lets you connect to the internet, uh, and it lets you do that anonymously by not um, showing who you are, and that means by not showing <coughs> where you're from, where you're connecting from, uh, what is your IP, what is your IP, because if you don't use Tor, it would be, for example, pretty easy to uh, pin down what building you're in, for example or what company you're connecting to a server from. And uh, this might not make much sense if you're not uh, a good life, but uh, 
to put it simply, um, if you want to do something and not uh, reveal who you are when you connect to the internet, it is a, a piece of software that lets you do that. Uh, in a way, it's uh, it's what you would do in real life. If you want, if you want to hide who you are, you would put on a mask. So Tor is kind of like the same, but for connecting to the, to the internet. And you will see uh, like lots of images like that on the internet. It's uh, like the easiest uh, way to put it. And then you would wonder, uh, what is the onion? The onion for? Uh, why the onion? Uh, also known as, uh, what exactly does Tor do to protect your identity, to, to protect who you are? And it is actually not that complicated. Uh, when you connect to a server, you connect directly to it via your ISP, your internet provider, and you go through the internet. I don't know, for example, if you're from Spain and you connect to the United Kingdom, you might go from the ISPs in, the, in Spain to the ISPs of the UK and then to the server, something like that. But when you connect through Tor, you first connect uh, through various, uh, at least three Tor nodes. And what that, do what that does is it randomizes your connection. So, um, for example, if I am a server and some of you want to connect to me, if you did it without Tor, it would be very simple for me to know, oh, it is you who is connecting, uh, who is like, currently connected to me, or it is him uh, instead of someone else. But if you all connect through Tor, uh, to me, you would all be Tor nodes. Uh, uh, it would be impossible for me to pin down which is which. Now, the thing is that if only one of you connects to me through Tor, it's very easy for me to know who it is because there's only one person using Tor, and that one person is connecting to my server. So the idea is that Tor is secure, because so many people are using it at the same time, that it's just like gibberish. It's impossible to uh, identify who is who, because there are so many people connecting at the same time through so many Tor nodes, that it's just impossible. That's why randomization is important. And uh, I don't know if you've heard about uh, random number generators, and why they are important in security. Uh, this is why, because if you cannot generate randomness good enough, it's very easy to predict uh, who will connect where, if that makes any sense. So this is the image that is usually shown when people want to explain how Tor works. It's not very, it's not very good in the sense that if you're, if you're not used to computers and networks, it doesn't make much sense. But uh, suppose that this is a user, in this case you, and this is a server. So for example, um, I don't know, uh, the website for Travit, and you want to connect to the Travit web website. If you did it directly, it would go straight from here to here, and then the website would be, uh, would, could say, oh, he's connecting from Barcelona with this IP. This IP is from this ISP and comes from uh, this part of Barcelona. And they could, for example, um, identify who you are and what you do in the website. But if you connect through Tor, these are Tor nodes, the ones with the plus, the green plus. So what you would do if you use Tor, you would connect uh, to a Tor node, then to another, then to another, uh, at least three. And that means that if you only used one, it wouldn't be that secure, but three is deemed good enough. And what you do is uh, connect through these three and then to the server. And then the connection goes back to these three. So the server, as far as it's concerned, is only talking to this node. It doesn't know anything about that. You, of course, know about all the connection, but you encrypt it, so um, this, this server doesn't know anything about where the connection is coming from. from. It only knows that it, it's coming from Tor, but it could be from any Tor user. So then the question uh, that, well, actually the reason why many people don't use Tor is that people go, well, I don't do any legal stuff on the internet. Why should I use Tor? I mean, uh, it doesn't make any sense. But then think again about the randomization of users. Suppose that, um, suppose not only I and someone else here use Tor, and that one of us, uh, I don't know, uh, did something illegal on the internet. I don't want to put any examples on tape right now, but suppose <laughs> that um, one, of, one of us two did something illegal. Uh, or I don't know, did something that compromised um, his security, not necessarily being something illegal, I don't know. Imagine going against the government or something like that. Um, if, there are, if there are only two users, it's very easy to know who it is because you only have two candidates. It's a 50-50 chance. I mean, 
you could potentially end up with a with the wrong one, but it's the chances of getting the right person are very high. But at the same time, if half of us use Tor, that's like what, 25 people? The chances go way down. So uh, the security within Tor lies in the number of users. So if so many people go, I don't need Tor because I don't because I don't feel in danger, if that makes sense, then the people who feel in danger don't have any other people who make their chances of being caught lower. Does that make any sense? That doesn't mean that by using Tor you will get like caught and um, put in prison. I mean, if they do catch you, you've done, you've, you haven't done anything wrong. Just a matter of um, increasing the number of users so that the security of using Tor is better. And then comes the, the question, uh, define illegal, because for example, in some countries, uh, freedom of speech on the internet is legal, but we live in Spain, or basically in Europe. Uh, we don't have to worry that much about those things, but for example, uh, I'm pretty sure at least someone in this room uses uh, sites like the Pirate Bay. They, as far as I know, they are not legal in Spain, but they are not, um, they don't go after people who use them. But uh, a simple use case of Tor inside Spain would be, for example, if you wanted to use a site like that. I don't know if you know, I don't know, I don't even know her name, not that I care, but uh, she was a, well, Cindy, yeah. She was a, a minister of, um, what was it? Culture. Culture, yeah. Uh, what she tried to do was ban um, piracy on the internet in Spain. What that means is shutting down sites like the Pirate Bay within Spain and going after the people who try to use that to uh, pirate media or movies or whatever. So, for example, in this case, you can technically download a movie, for example, and not get caught and not uh, have any consequences. But if this um, law had gone forward, if it, if it were to exist right now, it could be a problem. And I'm not saying that you should do illegal stuff, but it's just an example. Another example which doesn't concern what you would call illegal stuff or stuff that um, takes money away from people is the Ley Mordaza. I don't even know how to say that in English, but to put it simply, it's a law that's uh, actually been approved, I think. And what it does is it tries to, uh, it tries to limit what you can do uh, on the internet and on the streets. So for example, if you want to do a demonstration, you need permission first. And if you don't have permission, they have the right to um, set a large fine on you. And something similar applies on the internet. Uh, with this new law, it's a lot easier for them to go after people uh, if they do some kind of, depending on what they do on the internet. And uh, the line that um, separates freedom of speech from illegal stuff on the internet is like very thin. And it's even made thinner by, the, by this new law. So uh, actually a lot of journalists and activists in Spain are starting to use Tor, especially since the new Disney law got ruled. And speaking of people who use Tor, one of the largest Tor users is the Department of Defense of the United States. And by the way, can you see the pixels? <laughs> um, the reason, well, I don't, I'm not sure if you know, but the, the main contributor, uh, money, well, money-wise to Tor, is the is the oh, is the government of the United States? I don't know how much money an, uh, annually, but it's about half a million. And you might think that's a lot of money, but they do run into a lot of money. And you would think, why would the U.S. government fund Tor so actively if they are against Tor? And the fact is that they are not against Tor. Uh, in fact, they are like the, the first user, the best user. For example. Uh, Sometimes they explain this story about people who host sites with child porn on the internet. That's like the most illegal thing you can do on the internet. And people used to use, um, used to use um, for example, these people knew how to use Tor. But then um, when the government of the United States, for example the police, wanted to investigate those sites, when they went and tried to enter those sites, they got pictures of kittens. Because what the site administrators, administrators do, did was they knew all the IPs coming from the state and their server 
did, um, well, it was programmed to switch the entire site by dummy content, in this case, pictures of kittens, if the police were invest uh, was to visit the site. So police had to start using Tor to go against people, to go after people who used Tor. So it's this kind of tricky situation that got the US government so involved in Tor. It's also used a lot in the army, for example, in countries where internet is restricted. Um, the, the army really benefits from Tor. So suppose that you want to use Tor, but you, you don't because it's so slow. And, well, that's actually the, the price that privacy comes up at. There's, at the moment, there's no good way to make yourself anonymous without it uh, coming at a price, either monetary or, in this case, internet speed. What, uh, it's, because it's for the main reason that I explained before. You have to bounce your connection. You have to make it bounce a few times over the internet. And that's bound to make your connections about four times slower. And there's just no way around that. So then, for example, say that about here in Spain, about 99% of people use Windows, well, maybe 97 or something like that, and then 3% use Mac, and then maybe like 0.1% uses free software. So if you go and tell people you should use Tor, the majority of people will be using uh, proprietary systems like Windows. So if, you, if they go and tell you, I'm going to use Tor on my Windows machine or on my Mac machine, that's next to useless. And the reason is that, um, there's this saying in uh, what you would call the field of computer security that goes your system or your connection or wherever you want to call it is as secure as the least secure point. So for example, if I use Windows, I don't, but just for the sake of the example, if I use Windows and use Tor with Windows, Tor, is, Tor doesn't make me secure because Windows is making me um, not secure, if that makes sense. Because there's no there's no way for me to tell what's going on with Windows. But at the same time, if I used uh, a free operating system, free as in freedom, like Linux, for example, um, then I know what's going on. I know what's going on at the operating system level, and I know what's going on at the Tor level. So my whole system, you could say, is secure, uh, ignoring any possible backdoors in the hardware. But um, if that makes any sense. There's, there's just no, no point in using Tor in a system that you cannot trust. You have to trust the whole stack of stuff that you use, from hardware to the service or the server you're connecting to. And that involves operating system, application, <coughs> etc. Well, um, so you might be thinking, uh, why is he talking about Tor? Uh, I'm not a security expert. I mean, do not. Uh, take my word for any of that. I mean, that's what you can find on the website. I mean, uh, I don't think I...